Welcome to the Church of Obelis. Today I'm bringing you a micro guide for Chen. We're going to look at settings, hotkeys, control groups. We're going to look at um, a super secret way of recovering 2002's lost technology. We're going to look at how you uh, control your creeps. All of that coming up. My holiness deepens. If you want to become a better Chen player, I invite you to subscribe to this channel, join the fold, and together we're going to figure out how to play Chen in this new patch. So how do you get good micro? Is it just some sort of mystical force that you have, you're just they're born with it, or is it just uh, you need to just play um, hundreds and thousands of hours, or maybe you need, should just uh, start playing Walker 3 or Starcraft or some other RCS game and uh, acquire micro that way? I don't think so. I think if you want to become uh, good at microing Chen in Dota, you should be playing Chen in Dota. Obviously, if you have previous RTS experience, it's going to help, but the most direct way, obviously, is just to play Chen and uh, acquire the specific things you need to be good on on Chen. And micro is, of course, partially just being able to uh, quickly and accurately uh, click and uh, press those buttons, but it's also like a whole bag of tricks. There's a lot of things that can make your life easier, and that's the things we're going to cover in this video. So this is my hotkey setup. I have Q, W, E, and R, very standard stuff. Then I have items in the bottom row of the keyboard. Keep in mind that I use a German key uh, keyboard layout, so um, the position of Y and Z is uh, switched compared to standard American keyboard. So Y is the um, is the key that's in the um, bottom left uh, below the A, and um, so that's the bottom row is for items, and then I have control groups one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, that's just like a standard holdover from various RTS games that I'm using. So I have one, two, three, four, and then advanced card keys. So you can have, have more control groups, five and six. Uh, with the kind of layout that I'm presenting here, you're going to need six control groups to um, properly control Chen. I also have the seventh that I actually never use. And then you have select hero at F1. That's just a standard from uh, Warcraft 3. And then right next to that, you have select all controlled units. That's very important. This allows you to just select all of your units. It doesn't select carrier, it doesn't select non-combat units, but it selects a hero, all your creeps, any illusions you might have, and so on. And then also very importantly for advanced hotkeys, you have select all other units. Now I'm using the uh, circumflex key. Um, this should be a tilde on an American keyboard. This is the key that's right next to one, go to the left of, of the one key. And um, this selects all units other than your hero, so it selects your creeps, any illusions you might have, any sort of other summons like necro units, if for some reason you want to go necro on Chen. Um, this is a very important key that you definitely should, uh, should be using. Here in the options, I don't use right click to force attack. That would be a bit annoying, that would oftentimes uh, um, get you to accidentally attack your own units, uh, so I have that off. I also don't use unified orders with control. Some people really like that. What it does is, um, if you have that selected, um, if you press control, you all your units will go to whatever uh, uh, whatever you right click, um, yeah. even though you don't have them selected. I don't really like that it uh, kind of messes me up, so I'm disabling that. Um, but uh, a lot of players uh, like using that. And here in the advanced options, there's an option that's uh, called Smart Attack Move, and I strongly recommend against using that. I think that should be off. What this does is, if you do an attack move, um, normally what it does is it just attacks this, the uh, closest unit, but if you do Smart Attack Move, it attacks the closest unit to your cursor. So if you attack move here, it's actually going to attack this axe and ignore this one. Um, so you generally don't want to use that because you're oftentimes in a situation where you want to just uh, have like some creeps attack move down a lane 
And if you have a smart attack move, that's going to mess that up. So just leave that off and um, I'll just attack the closest unit here. And that's this closer axe here. So yeah, um, I would strongly recommend against using this option if you're playing Chen or other sort of uh, uh, creep based or summon based heroes. So as I said previously that you want to have six control groups as Chen, what do you use those six control groups for? Well, this is just my setup, it's other people use different setups, but uh, the one I'm using is um, I have one that's the entire army that I want to move, move around with. This sort of my standard team that I'm moving around with. I'm moving around with this team, um, I'm doing standard uh, Chen stuff, I'm clearing channel, channel camps, pushing waves, fighting, whatever it is. And then I have possibly some uh, creeps that are doing something somewhere else. Like um, this Ogre Frost Mage, he's somewhere else. Um, I have him in a separate control group, in, in my case it would be on, on 5. So if it was 5 I get this uh, Ogre Frost Mage. And what you often want to do with this Frost Mage is just uh, have it move around and uh, give out these Frost Armors or Ice Armors. So you, the way you do this is for example I have uh, Alice Hero here who's uh, creeping or whatever. So I'm just going to um, use uh, my uh, Frost Armor on him. And then I shift right click to the next hero, so in this case my own hero. What this means is that the ogre will go here, it will cast frost armor and then come to my hero. And um, then when his, his uh, frost armor is up again, I can do this and then right click, shift right click on uh, Sven. So it goes to Sven and is able to buff him next or some other hero. Um, so I don't often want to have this in my main group because uh, its common sets are not, not very strong um, and it's an available creep so it's important to just uh, uh, keep it safe. So my control groups 1 through 5, generally 1 is just my, my main group and then 2, 3, 4 and 5 are my separate creeps. So if I want to cast a net I can just uh, so come here, I want to cast a net, I just uh, press 2 and cast the net. Um, if I want to get uh, all units, I press F2, which is all units, so I, if I want this ogre to come with me, I just use F2. And then also often, if um, it trusts me the creeps to do something, um, I use my select all other units uh, hotkey and uh, that selects only the creeps. Um, so I have uh, my Dark Troll Summoner on 2, my Center Conqueror on, on 3, I have this Wildwing Ripper on 4, uh, on 5 the Frost Mage, and then this one doesn't have an extra control group, it's just a Cloak Creep, doesn't do anything special, doesn't require any particular micro, so it doesn't actually have a group. Um, the reason I have 6 control groups is uh, because on, on 6 I have this Tornado, so I don't actually have to select this Tornado manually, Instead, I can just press 6, which is my tornado, and this scroll up gets saved, so I don't have to actually bind this uh, in, in game. I just bound this at some point, and it always gets saved. So, this allows me to easily micro this tornado. Yeah. So, within this uh, 2 to 5 range, um, I'm dynamically readjusting my hotkeys based on what creeps I get. There are so many different creeps that. Um, it's not really worth it, not really very feasible to have some sort of uh, predefined uh, um, setup unless you want to have like several creeps of a particular kind on, on one hotkey always. That's also possible, but that's not what I use because that doesn't require me, does, doesn't allow me to do as, as fine grained micro as I would like. So I have this sort of setup. Um, generally, the logic is w w the, the creep that's uh, like the most important, the creeps are supposed to do something first in the fight, is on two. Then the second most important one on three, and then on four, and so on. Um, so with this kind of setup I have here, well, if I want to at attack a hero, uh, generally what I want to do is uh, um, cast the net first, so it can't run away, and then I can land the storm very easily um, with three. And then this Valdemar Grip is not like very crucial to use in the fight, so it's uh, on a sort of higher, uh, moved higher up in the, uh, uh, in position four. Um, yeah, so that's my general setup, and um, I'll dynamically adjust it based on what creeps I get. So if I have some sort of setup where I have several creeps of the same type, I will often uh, group them together in the same control group, especially if they have uh, some sort of ranged ability. So I'm going to group these as two, 
the centaur as three, and then the set automatus as four. So that if I approach an enemy, I can do something like this. Tab, stomp, tab, and um, that's a kill. Um, but um, here's a problem. You have to tab for, for these uh, to go off, um, as well as for these. Uh, even though there's the same unit, you still have to tab in this game. Um, whereas in Warcraft 3, you didn't have to do that. In Warcraft 3, everything worked just fine. You just had several units of the same type, and you don't really care which one of them is going to cast an ability. So um, you just tab to that unit type, and then every time you click, that spell is going to be used once. But unfortunately, this uh, early 2000s technology has been lost to the sands of time. Except there's a way of actually replicating this behavior, at least mostly, in Dota 2. And that is the super secret trick that I promised you earlier, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I first stumbled upon this from a Reddit post from user Aveo. Um, who pointed me um, to this, and I'm going to link this um, post down below. So the way this works is you go to your um, you go to your Steam directory. Um, you go to Steam apps, common, Dota 2 beta, game still in beta, game, Dota, and CFG. And once you're in this folder, you're going to insert um, this file here. This is just a text file with the extension CFG at the end. And all you need in this text file is you need to say Dota underscore player underscore smart underscore multi unit underscore cast one um, semicolon. This is just a comment. This doesn't do anything. Um, this is the thing you want. And also put that into the description, so you can um, use that for yourself. Just create a text file that you're gonna give the extension CFG and place this in this particular uh, directory. I'm not sure if this is, uh, if this uh, file exists by default and it's empty, or if you have to create it. But anyway, if uh, if it doesn't exist, you can just uh, create this, um, and then. It's going to look like this. Let's do this again and do no tabbing. So, cast boulder, cast boulder again, and it works. Let's do this. Shockwave, shockwave. And now it is again. But as, as you noted, I um, didn't cast it right away because it was still doing um, the first guy's shockwave. So, if, if both are in range, it works perfectly, but still you see the slight delay here. Whereas if, if they're not in range, um, it still waits for the first guy to finish doing his shockwave and then goes for the next one. So it doesn't work perfectly. Let's do this again. This guy's the shockwave. And now, if I click now again, now it does it. So uh, it still tries to send this command to the first one and it notices this first one can't execute the command, then it sends it to the second one. So if the first one um, has struck with off cooldown, this uh, it doesn't cast it again. Only now does it cast it again. So it doesn't work as well as this as it worked in Warcraft 3, but at least you don't have to do all this tabbing. One thing I should note is that it doesn't work with centaurs. So I can do this, and it just doesn't doesn't allow me to stomp again. It doesn't work after tab. So it, it works with um, these sort of range point uh, point click abilities, but it doesn't work with things like a stomp. Also, doesn't uh, work with the uh, clap from the Hellblast Smasher. But at least uh, it's something. <laughs> so, a very important component of uh, having good micro is actually knowing what you want to do with your creeps. Because if you don't know what you're going to do, you're just going to struggle. Um, you don't really have any sort of focus. Um, so, the important thing is. To recognize how strong your creeps are and how strong the enemy heroes are and how much AoE damage they have available. So in the early game generally these creeps are quite strong, especially once you get to like level 5 and level 7 you get these uh, stronger creeps because you have higher levels in persuasion. Um, in that stage of the game 
You can be very aggressive, you can do a lot of plays, you can gank people, you can get kills, you can push towers. You can do a lot of stuff with your creeps. And then at some point in the game there comes a phase when your creeps just just evaporate when they, as soon as they enter a team fight. There's just so much AoE damage flying around that creeps just die instantly. And that's just the stage of the game. Um, your creeps are no longer really about right clicking, at least in team fights. They're more about providing auras and utility. So in that stage of the game, you want to uh, um, you want to phase out uh, creeps like, uh, like the centaurs, and um, instead get things like the little centaurs and the other uh, other cloak creep, the potato. Um, you want to get the alpha wolf. You want to get the um, the frost ogre with his um, ice armor. Uh, the Vulcan is is quite good. Has a three armor aura. That's also very underrated. Um, you can definitely use that. Obviously, in this uh, new patch, you can only use uh, one cloak aura creep. So there's no point in getting multiple ones. But yeah, but uh, generally you want these aura creeps. And generally, what you want them to do is to stay back in the fight. You don't want to commit them into the fight unless you know that most heroes are dead. For the most part, you just want them to hang back, stay in aura range. Aura range is 1200 units, so that's uh, quite a lot of range. And keep those creeps safe. Uh, don't commit them if you're like pushing high ground, the enemies are alive. Don't commit your creeps up the high ground, just have them stay outside the high ground um, a little bit back so you can still uh, provide the aura up until the high ground, um, but they don't get killed very easily. And that's just generally what you want to do in, in, in the later stages of the mid game and then late game as Chen. You want to keep those creeps alive, you want these auras to affect your team and you want to right click with them only when there's no enemy heroes around, um, when it's safe. Like if, you, if you've won the team fight and most enemies are dead, you can of course go ahead and right click the enemy um, tower or whatever because those creeps still do a lot of damage. But if most enemies are alive and defending the tower, keep those creeps back and keep them safe. So Lake M10 is all about keeping creeps alive, providing auras to your team and providing a lot of value to your team just by being there, by surviving and um, being able to do things like uh, recall and uh, penitence. And that's how you win as Shen in the late game. If you want to know more about which creeps to use and at what stages of the game and how to uh, control them, um, take a look at um, this video where I go through all the different creeps and um, talk about how to use them. That video was from patch 722F, so some things have changed since then. And I'm actually working on an updated version of this video where I'm going to go through again over all the creeps and um, of course include the various updates that um, have happened since then, especially in the 723 patch. And um, if you don't want to miss that video, uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, uh, ring the little bell so that you get notified when I post that video. And in the meantime, may Obelis watch over you always.